Welcome to episode 260 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host. And today we're going to do a little travel vlog, but we're going to talk about why the Eagles broke my heart and the real power of this connection. I think I should wear my Eagle jersey for this episode. Hold on. All right, now we're ready. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. I know, I know, I know. The Eagles broke my heart. I'm wearing my Eagles jersey now. Actually, this is a really unique Eagles jersey. It's number 22 for 20, the year 2022. Check out the back. It says Asotu Khan, and it's actually signed by Brian Westbrook. It's a long story. I'll get into it uh, some other time. But last week, we had a Super Bowl. A lot of you probably watched it, saw it. You know I'm a diehard Eagles fan. Eagles had a great season, made it all the way to the Super Bowl, and then lost. And they didn't just, like, lose. Like, they didn't lose big. They lost, you know, by making some mistakes. They lost by some really terrible calls, especially one by the ref who I won't even say his name at the end of the game, who wrote the script for the game and robbed America of an amazing ending to a Super Bowl, even if the Eagles didn't lose. I'm not bitter. I'm just saying the facts here. A couple things happened. I watched the Super Bowl actually when I was in Orlando with my family on a family vacation, which is why I'm talking about like the Eagles breaking my heart. But more importantly, the power of disconnection, not the power of connection is, you know, what we hear talked about a lot of the time. Uh, sometimes you need to disconnect to connect. So parting words with the Eagles. They played a good, they had a great year, great season. Quarterback Jalen Hurts had a great quote from the press conference following. He says, you either win or you learn. So I'm going to leave that there. There is the mentality of a champion and someone who's bound to win more in the future. You win or you learn. But uh, kind of the topic I wanted to get to, and maybe I'll share a few photos from our family vacation. We'll turn this into a little travel traveler's blog or podcast for a minute. My family and I went on a little five, six day jaunt into Florida. We're in upstate New York is where we live. It's cold, it's snowy, it's gray. We went to Florida on the first truly intentional vacation we've had in a number of years. We have been, you know, kind of tacking on a couple days of family vacation or we'll call it family vacation when I've traveled, you know, have business trips or I'm at a conference. And we're like, hey, it'd be fun to bring everybody. So we bring everybody on the trip and I'm busy for a big part of it because, you know, I have to speak or teach or participate. I'm kind of, I'm working, right? Dad's working, but then they get to hang out in the resort. And, you know, we thought that would be great. But what we learned is that um, I was obviously very focused on the task at hand, which was, you know, the business side of it. And even the day or two before or after, wasn't very focused and we weren't able to really disconnect. So this year we said, let's try something different. Let's lay, lay back on the business trips a little bit and let's focus on what can we do as a family. So we were like, let's do it now before the year fires up. It's winter time. Great time to get out of upstate New York, um, which is, in my opinion, one of the best places to live because it is amazing three seasons out of the year. This fourth season gets a little long, winter time. So we went to Orlando. Uh, we decided to actually not do the hotel thing. Uh, instead, we rented a house, which I highly recommend. We got out of all of the bus and the bustle of other people and waiting in lines and waiting for elevators and waiting for parking. And we rented this, this great little house in a, a neighborhood called Reunion in Orlando. And we had our own stuff, our own kitchen that we made breakfast in, our own little pool that we could swim in. It had a little game room. And what we did was disconnected from everything. I wasn't on my phone. I was on do not disturb. My team will tell you, I wasn't even really answering text messages unless it was like super urgent, which only came up like once. Um, I didn't look at my phone. I didn't look at the news, especially after the Eagles lost. Literally, I turned the game off five seconds after the clock hit zero and I did not look at any news, Instagram, press really, none of that. I just checked out. And when we checked out and we disconnected from everything, it's amazing how much we started connecting as just as a family and connecting as individuals. And I got to connect with my kids. And when we were on our way home, all of the, I'll, leave, I'll save this part till the end though. So we, we hung out at the house and sometimes we just had no agenda and we hung out. And even still, we weren't really tried to limit device usage and like, what can we do together? And it's finally kind of rediscover one another. And you laugh a little bit. And then, you know, you also get to learn a bit, a little, little bit about personality. And as a parent, right, there's some parenting that gets to happen, right? Like little attitude adjustments and little, little changes in behavior and little teaching, a little moments of kindness and opportunity for myself to also be patient as, you know, I'm trying to navigate 
a vacation and travel. Like I'm learning to be more patient with my family, learning to cater with them, right? A lot of learning and growing happens, which all comes as a fact, as a, as a result of disconnecting with other things. Um, we did do Disney a couple of days as well. Um, we did Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, and we just had the best time. We had the best time, just no real agenda, show up at the park and just kind of wander. Um, I did like 20,000 steps one day, which is like 11 miles. So we walked, we love to walk. We walked around Disney Springs, which is, I call it like retail Mecca. It is like the coolest, best retail layout I've ever seen. And it's got restaurants and and like lots of great little retail shops and food and little things for the kids and balloons and the, even the parking, it's a Disney experience, right? Even the parking is so brilliantly thought out. You go into the parking garage and usually you don't know which way to turn. Where should I turn? Where should I go? Where's the open spot? Well, I have these little sensors above every parking spot. And if there's a car in it, it's red. If there's not a car in it, it's green. And you can see the light from the entire garage. So you can literally, literally from your car, glance out across the garage and look for the little green dots and drive towards the spots. It's just brilliant. Again, it's like retail Mecca. Disney's got it all figured out. And so we did the parks. We wandered. Uh, we have a little three-year-old Jaden. And so he got to meet Buzz Lightyear and he got to go on some rides for the first time. And we got to kind of see the world through his eyes a little bit. Um, so I'm not just, you know, I'm trying to paint this little picture of our vacation, right? That's it's family dynamic, right? There's some, there's some times when people get bored or I get moody, right? And all that happens. But in the end, disconnecting from the rest of the world, we found ourselves being very refreshed and being very... Um, more, much more emotionally connected and in touch with one another. And, you know, not, not trying to make this a parenting podcast or a relationship podcast episode, but I know so many of the people that listen to this are parents or they are in long-term relationships or they want to be parents or in a long-term relationship. So I'm just trying to share a little of these things, a um, little of these insights and like kind of learning from the experience that hopefully it'll help you or inspire you to take a step forward in, uh, in your parenting game or your relationship game. And, um, you know, so all of a sudden you start to notice that you're connecting and notice there are more hugs. And, you know, if you're a parent, you know, sometimes your kids tell you they love you or they just come up and hug you or they just want to be closer to you. And that is an indicator that you're building intimacy. And family intimacy is something that is, is easily passed over in an age where we are just tied up with so much hurrying and so much agenda driving and, you know, being really intentional to step aside and getting out of that is, um, is really essential to healthy relationships. So my kids, uh, my oldest is 16 and then we have just a, a 13, just about to be 14 miles is 16. Brooklyn is about to be 14. Elise is 11 and little Jaden is three. And so we got the whole range of kids, 16 to three. And at the end of the vacation, the kids, toward the end, all the kids are like, this is the best vacation we've ever had. It's the best vacation we've ever had. And that just as a parent, you know, makes you feel so good and makes you feel like you did it right. And it also is inspiring to realize that the reason it was the best vacation is because we connected. And we only connected because my wife Sarah and I were disconnected from everything else and all the weights and the pressures of regular life. Actually, you know, um, Sarah helps me see the importance and value of disconnecting. And even in that, you get more perspective, you disconnect, you get more clarity and you realize like, oh, yeah, my regular life, my priorities are out of order a little bit. Or even the things that I'm working on and all of the things in the businesses that I'm in, you, you start to see more clearly what needs to be done, what needs your attention. And you get refreshed and ready to go back into those. So I just wanted to share that whole experience with you today, hoping that in some way, shape or form, it'll remind you to disconnect sometimes so that you actually can connect with the things and the people especially that mean the most to you. Thank you for listening. It was good to be here with you today. Hopefully you disconnect, even if it's for like an hour, disconnect from the world and connect intentionally with the people that are closest, specifically your kids and your significant others. And uh, we'll see you next week. We came to fight.